guys, and in this video, I'm going to be creating an enemy AI um, system. So let me fix this camera. Enemy AI system. <laughs> yes, my hair is really messy. And um, the idea here um, is that there's going to be um, a couple of different types of these enemies, and it's going to be this bone fish, this bone eel that we have right here. So according to the Sun Castle Gaming, who is the rightful owner of this project right here, great, great um, company, great set of people um, that's creating educational games, by the way, they brought me on to help them out with this project. And so tonight I'm building the AI system and what's going to be included in here is that I'm going to try to create just one script and with that one script um, they'll be able to just select whether this enemy is a range or a melee because um, they're going to have two different types of heals some that charges up electricity and I guess shoot it and then there's others that might just charge at you and melee you so if I go over to this one here, you can see he comes alive and, you know, the electricity and everything. So um, some of the features of this AI is going to be the line of sight um, functionality. So if there's something obstructing the player from the enemy, the enemy shouldn't still attack it because, you know, he can't see it. So it's, um, it's not going to be like that. And then also we're going to use um, field of view, like within like a certain radius uh, and um, peripherals. So um, all of that we're gonna try to implement into this script right now. So if that's something you're interested in checking out or learning more about, I would say um, watch on because we're gonna get it right now, okay? So I'm a little tired, forgive me. It is 10.48 and I'm making the video now because this is when the kids are asleep. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the script folder here and go into the enemy script folder, nice and organized. So, I'm going to go ahead and right click and create um, the enemy script that I'm going to use. So, I'm, I'm going to call it uh, Bonefish AI. Yep, Bonefish AI. And I'm going to find this creature right here. Actually, you know what? I like to test sometimes on other things that are not the um, the main object. So I'll go ahead and I'll just create a 3D cube. It's all the way somewhere in Africa. So I'm just going to bring it, put it on Glam, which is the character right here, and take its position and just zero it out, which just brings it right here where I can find it. After that, I'll go ahead and unparent it from Glam. So that it's just right here already and I'll put it right here this will say serve as my my enemy for right now and I'm gonna put the enemy AI script on him oops not the enemy AI that is that is actually another script that I did not create bonefish AI is the one we're talking about and so one thing to note that you should also know is that whenever you want to know which direction something is facing the blue arrow determines which direction it's facing and, and the reason that I didn't put this script on the bonefish right off the bat is just because the bonefish is set up a little bit differently where you can see the blue arrow the direction he should be facing is actually pointing that way while his head is that way so he's a little bit reverse and I don't want to spend the time to um, sort that out yet so just to make sure we make the script work um, we're just gonna put it on a cube and then once we know the script work we can always make sure that the um, 3d representation is aligned with the script so it's always important just to pick somewhere to start I'll double click on the script and let's get started looks like it's opening over here on my other monitor nope all right yes no maybe so um interesting okay so something else opened up over here but it's not a, it's over here in front of me okay so um first thing we're gonna start off with is a little drop down so that we can pick between whether this is a 
range or a melee style fish and what will happen is the code will follow that logic and so we just have one AI script for all of the types of fishes which I already told you I would do so public enum and now we would give it a name um, I think fish type is pretty good and then with the curly bracers we just start adding some types in here so I will call this range and then comma melee okay and you do not add a semicolon at the end of this command that's all you got to add and you're good to go next you create your public variable that we're gonna see in the inspector and the type of this is the type that you called this right here so you could literally just copy paste it boom and now give it a name that you're going to refer to it inside the script and i'm just going to call it um fish type or or, or actually enemy type and that's it now that is called enemy type if i save it and head back to the code and then um, once unity processes it and i click on here you can see now i have a little drop down let's just collapse some of these so we can see it better see right here i have a little drop down range and melee so now it's going to be really easy to just select what type um, of behavior it's going to have with just that little drop down excellent all right i'm looking at the video here and i feel like my camera could sometime get in the way and I forget so I'm actually gonna turn my camera off there's no need to see my face um let's see here there we go turn that off we don't need it and let's continue <coughs> um next step I will need some stuff in the start uh, start function but I don't need it right now what I'm gonna do is start creating my function here which is going to tell me whether or not I'm in front of or the enemy is in front the 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 <laughs> the player is in front of the enemy so it's a bool a boolean type function it's a return function right now it's not returning anything so your visual studio will show you the red uh, line underneath it um, but uh, it's not an error it's not an error yet <laughs> or it hasn't it's not a full error yet we just got to put some code into it to make it work um, properly. So let's start off by determining which direction the target is. And the target is going to be the player. In fact, let's create that as well. We'll make it private. So we just say transform and we'll call this um, player, right? Because the this script is on the enemy and he's going to target the player. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set player equal and then I can just find the game object by tag or by name let's see what works best okay so I'm noticing that like the camera here is tagged with player as well as the player is tagged with player so my best bet not to get anything confused is just to target it by the name and so the name is glam with a capital G so I will do that so now I'll say player it's going to be game object dot find and we're going to find glam inside the game so this is this brings me the game object however you can see that the uh the the um the variable type is actually transform so that means i just got to go further into this game object and bring back the transform and now player will indeed represent the transform of glam now that we're good with that, let's go and proceed with checking if he's in front of the um, enemy. So we say vector three. We're creating a three-dimensional space uh, in three-dimensional position in 3D space. And I'm gonna call it direction um, off player. So direction of the player, which direction he's located. And to get that is simply your direction. So the enemy direction by saying um, transform dot position minus our player position and that will do it for us 
Next is time to get the angle. So let's create a variable right in here. Can't spell float, float. And I'm gonna call it uh, angle. And this angle, to get the angle of the um, what we're looking for, we can just use the vector3.angle command. And it's simply just gonna ask us from and to. So all we gotta do here is give it the from, and it's gonna be from the forward facing of this enemy. So transform dot forward. And then the two is this variable that we made right here, which is the direction of player. With that, my friend, we have everything we need to create a simple if condition that will give us a yay or a nay, whether we are in front of the player. So we're going to say if, and then we're going to do a math F to get the absolute value of angle, just like that. So look at the command with, with space. You can see that it's just this command right here gives us the absolute value, but it's not a full condition. It just gives us the absolute value. And if the absolute value of this range, or, or I'm sorry, this angle is more than 90, and we're gonna do it again, absolute value, math um, f dot absolute value of um, angle again. And if this time it is less than um, I think it's about 270. If this is true, then we will return true. Okay, now it is still false because what if this is not true? We still need a default fallback and which would be false. All right, so this will only return true if we're actually in front of the enemy. And to test this, um, before we return true, because remember when you do a return, kind of like say, stop the code there and go no further. So that's why um, we can put false down here without saying else, okay? You don't, you don't have to say else because this returns the code and it just stops there. So if this never returns, then and only then it will be actually false. So before you do any returns, you have to do all your logs here. I could just print something out. But I'm gonna do a debug dot draw line instead to see if I can draw a line from this enemy position to the player position. And also I will make it a certain color make it red since we're underwater and the green and blue might not show up as well so let's check if this works all we have to do now is take the function and let's just continuously check for it inside the update now why did we make it a boolean so that this function here represents a true or false so we can easily use it in a comparison statement to say hey if the player is in front of us we can have something happen. Um, but this is just a, a fraction a fraction of what we're actually going to be accomplishing. But it's always a good time to give it a test. All right, so I'm going to hit play. And I'm actually going to take this window off. Put it about over here. It's not, it's not working as planned. Let's put it below. There we go. And you can see right here in this scene that it shows me in front of him because I am indeed in front of this cube. And if I go this way, let's go this way a little bit. Try to get out of his line of sight. Now I'm a little bit behind him. See that? Behind him, if I go in front of him, he sees me, sees me, and then if I go a little bit this way, boop, I'm behind. So now I'm behind him, doesn't see me, and then when I go in front of him, sees me. So that's working just as planned. And you can see that line is being drawn. Okay, next, um, 
we want to check for line of sight. So what we have going on there is like a conal perspective, but not a line of sight. And all we have to do for the line of sight is, why does this other script open up? <laughs> it's just bugging me. What is this anyways? Okay, that's cool. Looks like some other stuff I did. Um, anyways, um, back to this. Now that we can check if he's in front of us, we'll create a similar script to check if he's in line of sight. And all we have to do is verify that this is true and the line of sight is true. And bada bing, bada boom, we have a nice working AI. So for this one, let's go ahead and make it a bool return function as well. This one, we're going to call this one um, a line. Let's call it is line of um, sight. I think that's how you spell it. There it is. Is line of sight. So with this one, we're going to call, um, ugh, can't speak. We're going to do a ray cast. And we're going to do a ray cast hit. Let's just do underscore hit for this. So I'm going to call him. And then here we go into the vector three to get a direction. It's basically, basically this right here. I could just bring it down here. And um, yeah, same exact thing. What I feel that works better, I don't really see the difference between them. What I feel that works better is put in this first when I'm doing this. And then the transform here. I really do not see the difference, but it just works better for me for some reason. So now we're going to do a physics. So this way you um, check for a hit. So physics dot ray cast. And then we have to tell it from where. So from this target um, position, right? Um, to the direction of the player then it's gonna go out until it hits and then we can say about how far maybe about the 50,000 or something like that and now the body for this function so in here we are simply gonna check to see if it hits so if it hits um and um, the transform dot I want to check I don't want to actually check the tag but like the game object dot I can I can probably do transform dot name yeah if the transform that name equal and we'll say glam because again the tag was already kind of being used by multiple um, objects. So I'll just say glam. Then in that case, we're going to draw a line again. And I'm not, I'm not going to retype everything. I'm just going to do this. Draw a line. Um, can I make it? Can I get away with green? I'll make it green. And if that's the case, we simply return. So it's a really easy, clo uh, really easy uh, code here. Return true. And then... Um, if it's not hidden, glam, um, it's just going to return false by default. So, just return false. And, I mean, this code is finished. And, again, we're just going to copy the code and call it right here. Just call it. And both of these will return true or false based on the situation. So, now we're ready to test this. Um, so, we can make these windows a little bit, like, bigger just for testing purposes you know what let's go with a tall view and then I'll just put them kind of like side by side maybe yeah wait um, where did we go nope oh, that's on land where is our cube? Here it is. Okay, so we're back in here. All right, so I hit play. 
and there's our green there's our green um you see our green which which follows us no matter where we go so it's cast an array at us at all times you can see that it cast array at us at all times no matter where we go but let's see if this rock here has any collision you can see that that um, ray just turn to red because remember the code uh, we're still in front of him so now it's only cast in the red in fact in fact let's do this um, let's turn off the red and just check with the green to see because we know that this works if we're in front of him we checked that we know that that works so now we're just gonna check to see if we're in line of sight all right so um, let's do that let's see what's going on here with my mouse Okay, hit stop and I'm going to hit play. And now you can see green because it's casting at me. And no matter where I go, you know, it's just casting and checking to see if there's anything between me and it. And now I'm going to do that. I'm going to put something between me and it. So I'm going to hide right behind this rock. And you can see that laser is gone. If I go back up, it sees me, it sees me, it sees me and now it doesn't go out here it sees me no it doesn't no it does no, it doesn't no, it does no it doesn't so as you can imagine you probably already get the idea of what we are doing at this point um i can remove the debug draw lines because at this point we have everything we need right here to make this work fish um <laughs> to make this work um i was i was gonna say profit the officially like it's on official right now but to make this work we have both of these that return a true and a false so obviously all we have to do is say if is in front right and is line of sight then do something clever. That's it. That is absolutely it. Okay. So this would mean that he's also in front of us within our view and there's nothing obstructing him. So now he can do something cool. What he does here will depend on what type he is and um, what we want him to do. So um, I think we're going to wrap up here and continue some more tomorrow because it's now 11.09. And I just kind of want to give you guys just the idea of what I'm going for, for right now. So the objective now where you would go from here, now that you have the types, you can make them do um certain things and the way you would check to see what type he is you would simply say well now that the player is in front of you and you can see him um you can say well you want to add maybe a range like is the player close enough and you can easily get um distance with vector three dot distance you check your um, player position and transform that position so you can get distance you can do something like um, since you're already um, keeping track of the player position you can you can just put this inside of another if for example um, we can create a public float and we can call this max range so this is how far the player would be allowed to before he gets attack you can simply say if well let's not make it a one-liner you just do a vector three and just and just call it um well i'm sorry not a vector three but a float and just call it um current distance and say that equals to vector three dot distance just like that 
and just needs A to B. So you say transform dot position and then um, player dot position. Once you have that set, my friends, you simply do your if current distance is um, less than your max range. And then at this point, um, I would say you put you put then the if is was it, is front and is line of sight boom now you're ready to attack the player or charge at the player whatever you got to do and then now to check which type he is to do that is really simple you say if um the name of your variable here enemy type um you don't need to put a dot equal or nothing like that. You just say if enemy type, uh, what's it called? If enemy is it, uh, you don't have to say like dot. Well, yeah, you could say dot to string. If you convert it to string, um, and then you say equal, equal, boom. Uh, let's say range, just like that. This will work, boom then you can have something happen. I believe there is a, a, I believe there is a, isn't there a command in here? Compare, hash, no, I guess not. But this will give you the string value of what it is. You might be able to get away with just saying this. No, that doesn't work. So, um, dot to string, this is one way to do it. I'm not I'm not a big um, enum type of guy, so there might be another way that I'm not thinking of right now. But yeah, so this would mean he's range, and here you say do range stuff to the player. Else, you know, do do melee stuff so that's it that's that's the gist of it let me zoom out kind of like look at the full code here um we're not using these imports we're gonna get rid of them and i said imports like it's python um quick little variables here make sure that the player is clam checking distance before we do anything because you could be in front of the player and like miles away you shouldn't be attacked you know and a little command here to check to see if he's in front of the player. A little command here to check to see if he's within line of sight. And when working together, they create a nice little AI system. So that will do it um, for today. Um, tomorrow we're going to work on the code to make him um, attack the player at a certain range. So we can have a certain range where he attacks. Um, and then also make him move up follow chase the player um because he's melee or whatever the case is okay so again thank you guys for watching hopefully this was um education no <laughs> to somebody out there and you all you guys are always welcome to ask some questions or <clears throat> if there's something you don't understand um, i'll definitely uh, respond try to get you help to need all right <clears throat> have a good night